see the amazing work that you guys do. Anyway, <laughs> hi. Um, again, I'm Paul, and uh, you know Marina, and you guys know Celia. And um, Lexus, are you here? Or hello, hello? Uh, I'm here. You're here. Okay, great, great. And Crystal, welcome. Um, and both of you have brought multimodal work, which is great. Um, I thought we might start by your saying to us, um, and I'm already off the agenda, but I do have the agenda. We'll, we'll get back to that. Why don't, we, why don't we start by saying something you did today that makes you feel good about yourself? That's always a good place to start. So I'll say that slower. Something you did today that makes you feel good about yourself. Doesn't have to be a good thing you did. Makes you feel good about yourself. Um, either as a, as a professional, as a student, or in your life in general, it's up to you. And Celia, um, you start us off. I can start. Yeah, I went to a school, a public school in the Bronx. Uh, it's called Pan Academy, where most students speak Spanish and they hardly speak English. And I observed the teacher, who's my student in in teaching internship. I, I feel great about, you know, ha having to be able to help the teacher to better uh, the delivery of his lesson through our, you know, conversations, pre-conferences, etc. So that made, made me really feel good. And also driving to the place and finding a parking spot in a place, <laughs> in a place where there, it's yes. so difficult to park. <laughs> so that makes me really feel good. Cool. Thank you. Crystal, why don't you go next? Oh, uh, sure. So I walked five miles today and I'm really happy because I got sunlight and exercise and I i didn't pass out. <laughs> I'm here. Wow. So that was a good thing. Was it just to walk five miles or were you going somewhere? I walked to work and then I walked back home. Nice. Wow, nice. Yeah. Great exercise. Cool. Marina. Um. I love Fridays because in my class, like we always have this like um, community Kahoot. So my stu uh, one student each week gets to build like uh, an all about you Kahoot and the kids like have so much energy and it's really exciting because um, they get to learn new information about one another while playing a game. So it's just like a really nice way to end the week. And then we went outside and it was so beautiful. It's so beautiful out. So they were so happy. They were running around and it's a really nice way to end the school day. Cool. Cool. Um, so Alexis. Um, uh, today I help students pick their college that they're going to. Which students? So, um, all of the seniors. So that's kind of like what I'm in charge of. Um, and it was really good because some of the students were like super excited. They're like, Miss, I want to know about like when I could pick my classes. Um, and like, when is it? And I was like, I don't, <laughs> I'm not sure it's based on what they tell you, but they were like super excited just to like hear them and help them and just like even like be there for them in any type of way. Um, it was really good. <laughs> so, wait, so explain again though, you, you helped them just know what college they're going to is that what you said so i help them decide where they want to go oh so oh, okay. we've been like i've been through with them like the whole process like filling out fafsa filling out tap applying for these schools um getting their um essays in like helping them edit them helping them write them <laughs> just like i've been helping like with the whole process so then now it's we're up to decision day where they have to pick where they want to go and they're like they're just really excited. They're are these CUNY colleges or, or are they? Yeah, CUNY oh. colleges. Okay. Majority of them are going to CUNY. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So, and what what makes you feel good about that? What makes you feel good. Um, just being able to help them. Just being they're available in any type of way they need me. Um, some of them like got emotional because they didn't get into the school that they want to some got into the school that they want to so mm -hmm. just like i said overall being there for them that's ultimately like what i want to like bring to the table as a teacher as well as you know having them learn their content just like you know i'll be a memorable teacher because i was like i was there for them they're like okay yeah that was my favorite teacher or 
Um, some of them say that even though I'm not a teach, like I haven't even taught them. Um, cause that, they, like every time they just come to me, they know like, oh, I can talk to her, just let her know how I'm feeling or things like that. Are any of them going to Lehman or planning to go? Yeah, to Lehman? there there's a lot of them actually. Oh, nice. <laughs> Good news. Yeah. So they won't be far from you, even. Yeah, they won't. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of cool. They're like, Miss, can we come back next year so you can help us again? I was like, I don't know if that's how that works, but okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So one thing I did today was I listened to music by one of my favorite composers, uh, Elliot Sharp. Fridays on Spotify is uh, Radar Fridays or whatever it is. The new new things get dropped. And Elliot Sharp dropped a new album this week. So I listened to three of the songs on there so far. So that made me feel good. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Um, so multimedia composing, what we are, what we want to show you is something Mar uh, Marina and I have been working on with the authors of a, an article that was published in um, English Education. Um, we're actually, some of the authors, or at least one of them, but I think more than one, are going to come to a meeting just similar to this meeting next Wednesday. And for the last three Wednesdays, we've been meeting with teachers and they've been bringing student work. Marina brought some student work um, to kind of test out this framework. I know I'm, I'm all over the place here. I'll, I'll try to be clear. This framework that was published in July of last year, right? So it's brand new sort of thinking. It's based on a lot of thinking that has come up over the last couple of decades. Oh, good, she'll get her. Um, and what's been interesting to do is to go into now comment and read it, and you'll see. I think there are about a hundred comments on the article right now. Welcome, hi, hi. Hi, excuse my tardiness. That's okay. Hi, Zelka. Hi, everyone. Tell us one thing you did that makes you feel good about yourself today. That's what uh, we all today, do. Yeah. Okay, today I um, actually overcame an obstacle, right? Nice. And by doing that, I was able to help someone at work. And specifically what I did was I was able to get a student that graduated in 2020, um, a copy of his transcript and diploma that were like completely lost. So I went crazy for it in different departments and I was able to find it. And that boy is going to go to college. So I'm really happy for that. That's great. That's, re that's really cool. Um, thank you. And what, why, why, did, how, why does that make you feel good about yourself? Um, because I was able to help someone and it's something that's going to end up helping, you know, they're doing something to help themselves by furthering yep. their education. So it helps. It makes me feel good that I was able to contribute to that. Cool. Thank you. So I was just, um, not doing a very concise, <laughs> so I'm going to try to be concise here, explanation of what we're going to do. What we're going to do is um, we're going to do some reading of that article that was published last summer. Um, and I'll warn you ahead of time, it's not a terribly easy article to read. Um, and so what we thought we would do is ask you to read just a section of it and then report back to the group about that section. So the, the authors of this article um, have have created three domains, they call them, and they've created questions for each domain. And it allows you to look at a multimodal piece of work, a multimodal composition, from the point of view of the audience, or mode and meaning, or originality, right? And so we'd like you to do some reading and annotating of the text to kind of get clear on what that that is, and then you'll be the expert on one of those three. Um, and then we'll look at the work that you brought with the, that you brought, and um, 
try to apply the questions to your work. Does that make sense? Um, but first, I'd like you to tell us, what is multimodal composing? You've run into that in your classes before. How do, how do you understand multimodal composition? I would say that it's not a traditional way of learning something or even completing a task. It was definitely using like technology or you can even use art. It's just something that's not your typical write on a piece of paper assignment. Mm -hmm. Crystal, anything to add to that? Uh, I guess, yeah, when I think of it, I think of, I, I like that she said art because I didn't think of that. I, I instantly, I just have such a one track mind, but I, you know, I think of like different ways to incorporate um, tech into it um, or to engage. That's just not text, you know, pictures, videos, audio. That's what I think about. Um, but what I did notice about what we read about last semester in the class that I had to develop this project for was that um, it also, it, it, it tried to like cater to different ways of thinking and interacting with material. Mm -hmm. um, some people think about everything all at once, like a big web and we don't go from like thing to thing like chapter to chapter or anything like that so it was kind of catering to those different types of thinking cool Delka, have you run into multimodal composing or assignments yet are you still there yeah so i this is the first time that i hear of it hmm. um but just the name is kind of like self-explanatory <laughs> so um yeah but yeah, it's the first time that I, I hear of it. Cool. Okay. All right. So I, I'm a little, Celia, anything you want to add to that? Marina. So I'm going to go to the etymology of the word multimodal. Multi means many and modal means forms or methods, right? So you go goes right. This, even though you haven't, probably seen something like this, the name suggests that this is a type of a composition where you have different forms or platforms or methods of presenting things. It could be audio, video, written, you know, physical document, etc. I don't know if I'm right, but we, we do a lot of that in, in math, especially during the pandemic, where we had to um, create lessons via Zoom, where we have to integrate videos, uh, documents, PDF, et cetera, in one lesson. So that's that to me is multimodal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And over the years, people have thought about how can we assess this? And I'll, I'll say one of the things they say in the article, um, often teachers end up using the same way of assessing that they do the traditional pen and paper stuff, right? Um, and then they miss a lot of what's going on in the multimodal experience. So what they're trying to do here is give us other frameworks to look at multimodal work, um, and so we don't so we don't miss things, and so we give better feedback to to you to to any maker who's making making multimodal work. Um, and I, I'm a little nervous about doing this, but I'm going to do it anyhow, um, just because it feels like we're isolating you. But we want you to um, somebody maybe just go off either to the blue one, the green one, or the yellow one down below. Don't forget the yellow one down below. Um, on the table, there is a, a poster. If you click on that poster, it'll take you to a, a new tab will open on your browser to that now comment section. It'll tell you how many paragraphs to read there. Um, you just, so let's give that 10 minutes, let's say. We'll come around and talk to you so you're not so lonely. But, okay. Does that sound right, Marina? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so that each person goes to one and... Yeah, and then they'd be the expert on that one. You, okay, yep. you got it. Okay. Marina, I have to say goodbye. Thank you for... Oh! Goodbye. Have a good Take care. Bye. We'll see you soon.
I just want to make sure you get started okay. Do you, did you find it? You're muted. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, I was too. So I you're guess. look you're looking at audience, and you're reading and annotating paragraphs twenty four to forty three there, right? Yes. Okay. I'll come back and say hello. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll check on others. Lexis, did you find it okay? Yeah, I, I'm reading the 44 to 67. You got it. Okay. Thanks. Idelka found it okay? Yeah, she's good. She's I checked good. in with her. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good.
Everything going okay? Just checking in, Lexus. Yeah, it's good. Thanks. Okay. Um, of course, feel feel free to, you know, reply to other people's comments and back and forth. You know, whatever you'd like. Thanks. In, in those paragraphs. Okay. Everything going okay here? I think so. Okay. Yudaka, I just wanted to remind you that you can reply to other people's comments or make your own comment. Those possibilities there. Okay. Yeah, let's give this more time. Yep. I'm messing in the audience section again, too, so just to say. But don't let me distract you. <laughs> All, right. All right. So, but you you can um, go out and reply to other people as well. We either way, you know, feel okay. free. Yeah, however you want to do it. Okay.
I forgot to log into now comment before the, you know, oh, no. getting into did you lose work? I uh, I was just I wanted to like add in some stuff. Yeah. But I will Can you do it, now? it now? Okay. Yeah. But you've been reading so you can catch up. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, I read it and I took notes on my on oh. my notebook. <laughs> okay. That's how I can't like write t like type but stop and read and type like I have to like you No, know, I know everybody has their own. Yeah, yeah. Somebody said they went home and they printed out the article and they needed to do that first and then. Oh yeah. man, I miss so I miss having stuff on paper. <laughs> I know. I don't know why. So like, take, but take so you could use another ten minutes, right? Yeah, like five or ten. Well, let's make yeah. it ten. I, I think it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll let the others know that. Okay. Uh, Alexis, we're going to give this another 10 minutes if you could use that time. Does that work for you? 35, 45. Yeah. I'm sorry, what do you mean? So we're going to keep reading for reading and commenting for another 10 minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, fine. so 4.45 will begin. Okay? Okay. All right. I've been talking to the others and we sort of negotiated to keep going for another 10 minutes, 4.45 will be finished with this stage, okay? Yudelka, you got that? She, maybe she's, <laughs> it's okay. Does she check in at all? You're muted. Oh, you're, you're muted. Yeah, she's good. She was good. Okay, okay. Okay, so 4.45 will go. Good. Yeah. I'm going to go back to audience. Hold on. <laughs> you got logged in okay? Yes. Okay.
nuestra. Power dynamics. Mm. Also, I don't. I don't. Mm. How are the are the ten minutes up? Because the thing is, no, I will keep writing. Time. So I was like, I, I know you lost got, in my commenting for a good, second. Good, good. You've got five more minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, me too. I was looking up. Right. <laughs> okay. We're going to give us five more minutes. Yep. Um, want to check in. Do you want, Marina, why, why don't you lead the conversation about them? I'm sorry. I was just uh, okay. listening to a video oh. uh, that I put on the thing. So uh, you know that's what? why I have, I've been muted. And then I forget. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what? When we come back, why don't you lead the yeah. conversation about, okay, would you read there? Is that right? Yeah, and so then, just summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I'm not sure how to have them share, but two of them are ready to share. We'll try to leave time for both. Yeah, her website looked awesome. Yeah, that'll be fun to do. Okay. I think, um, yeah, I don't, we'll, we'll go with the flow. I'm not sure how to go. <laughs> I, okay. I guess we do want to pull, we do want to look at the questions a little bit with each thing. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Why don't we just move around the room and and look at, yeah, with with the thing in tow, with the uh, website in tow. Okay. The other one. The, For the sharing uh, part. Right. And um, what's your name? Um, Lexus. Lexus has a... Um, a presentation also that looks interesting so okay doesn't matter we'll start with whoever wants to go first okay but you want me to just when we get back just kind of have everybody summarize each of the yeah um three elements and then we'll do the sharing and we'll walk around the room and and consider the questions through the lens of the artifact Very okay. Cool. okay all right uh, so finish your last comments and then come back to the big group, Lexus. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. Yudelka, finish your last comments there for now and then come back to the large group. 
or the, the circle. All right. You should be on your last comment for now. <laughs> I think I'm good. <laughs> okay. So come on back to the large group. Okay. Hi. I'm just waiting for Yudelka. Yeah. Yudelka, can you join us up above? Hello, hello. Do, 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 do. I wish I could knock on your window. Anyway. <laughs> Ice cream. All right. Let's see. All right, either Yudelka is totally involved in her comments or something else came up. <laughs> She's not responding right now. All right, but we could start. Yeah. When I start? Okay. Um, so we, okay, sorry. So we all um, got to read a little chunk of the article, which I think after, for me, this is probably my third or fourth time kind of interacting with this text. And I know that each time I go back to it, I discover something new. Um, so it's nice that um, everybody will share a little bit about what they read and then we can continue our conversations and consolidate it together. So um, would you be willing to start, Crystal, with um, telling us a little bit about the audience section and what um, that particular part of the article offers us in terms of the ideas? Yeah, sure. So, um... The part that I read was about the audience and how social networking has um, kind of shifted the concept of an audience um, because it's you, you don't really know who your audience is going to be. Your audience is, whether it's invisible or like an unwanted um, party um, that has access um, to your content, um, even though you, you're writing and you're imagining who you're writing to and catering to, um, that's not necessarily how things have been uh, how things are now. Um, so the role of the audience has expanded. And because of that, um, now it's more likely for the audience to directly interact with the writer, which is both exciting and probably unexpected compared to, um, I guess, traditional forms of communication um, or publishing or creation, creating stuff for people. Um, and then it, I like that. Uh, that section also talked about like the power dynamics and kind of how the writer can curate things for this imagined audience or this unwanted or invisible audience. So um, one of the comments, which was by you, Paul, that I really liked was that uh, the focus should be on what you want your audience to do. And like when I saw that, I was like, oh, okay, this is interesting because if you focus on not so much who these people are and this ideal like population or demographic, um, then you can actually just focus on the experience that whoever accesses your content, like what kind of experience do you want these people to have? Um, and that's kind of like how you cater to your audience, even though you don't know who they are. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I got out of it. Yeah, that's, that's, that was really good. That was really good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was really good. I, 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 the example I thought of when I read this section again is is the TikTok dancers, like um, so you do a dance for your audience not to entertain them but for them to do it too, right? And that's like a different head that you have for your audience then, right? You're, yeah. Because what you're doing is you're creating something to give somebody else an experience, mm -hmm. um, which is fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good example, Paul. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. TikTok and I mean, that's like a really that. good. Yeah, that's a really because I think that whole like now with this type of work, putting it 
out for the world to see. It's, it's true that idea of like, you don't really know who your audience is. You don't know who will stumble across your creations. So, and then what they'll do with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, Lexis, can you tell us a little bit about mode and meaning? Thank you, Crystal. So it's very connected to audience. You will have to think about what you want your audience to do in the mode, what you want them to perceive while you're um, giving out content. Um, I kind of thought of it more, <laughs> I didn't think of it more like the social aspect. I thought of it more like in the classroom. You want to think about what what would you be able to use to attract your students and what parts of it do you think you also have to think, where would they be lost? Where would I need to help them? Where would I need to help them navigate through the whichever type of mode that you do choose to place your content on? Um, one thing that I really liked um, is saying that Sorry, I'm going to go. It was in paragraph 46. Thinking about, um, like, they have a cult, like, they had a culturally, linguistic, linguistically diverse, like, group of 12th graders, but they also um, didn't want to like, single out the student just because they're not technical savvy or they don't know how to navigate that mode. Um, and I think that's also um, what we do in a classroom, like, we're all exploring the mode together, it would be useful then, you know what? you here have a project you pick the type of mode that you want to do um it also said like that can also limit um what students want to do like if you pick a, if you tell them to do a project and they said you choose what you want to do instead of them exposing them to the different types of modes um and i also commented mm -hmm. on um i believe it was paul also i comment on your comment that you were saying that like getting ready to, you said that getting ready to really know the tools they're using and not the fortunate use that you would like them to, to yeah use. we have a, we have a fight going on about that in there. <laughs> yeah it's not a fight I, it's I not feel a like fight i started it too right didn't i start it <laughs> yeah you, anyway go ahead i yeah. started that one yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make sure jane joins us keep going, keep going. hi there Oh, hi. We're up in the uh, circle talking about the article. Um, okay, cool. You can join us. Um, oh, wait. Sorry. If that's okay. Do you want oh, wait. I, Paul, why can't I move? Uh, I don't know. Click click somewhere and see if you can. Yeah, there you go. Now you're moving. Is it working now? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Sometimes it just has a hiccup. Just click on the floor and you can also, yeah. wherever you click, you'll go there. Yeah. Okay. If the students are not interested in that mode, they might get lost. They might say, okay, you know, I don't want to pay attention because I can't follow. But getting them to explore it, like, different types of way, you can so say, okay, I remember when we did, for me, I'm uh, sorry. Jane, you might want to move over a little bit into the circle so you can hear everybody. And I was so, I was very into it. I remember moving around. Perfect. But that also helps them remember, okay, this type of organelle does this just like that connection between the mode and having their attention be brought in like what caters to them so i think there's definitely a lot to talk about in that realm as paul mentioned and there's definitely like that running thread <laughs> um but we'll move into um and it'll probably keep growing the more like People, more people engaged with this work and the thinking around it and, and hearing um, all the different perspectives is, is really great. Um, and, but we'll finish up with originality. Um, Yudelka, can you tell us a little bit about that part? Oh, yes. So um, one of the things that I liked the most was um, one of the sentences in the, um, in the paragraph that mentioned that um, Originality is, doesn't mean that it's a brand new idea, fresh, like no, never thought of before. It could be something that you kind of like changed or you saw before or um, you're turning it into like something different. So, um, and that comes from the uh, old belief that no idea is new, but it's just an old idea revived. So when it comes to mold, um, to um, multimodal compositions, you know, you may think like, oh, you know, I want to be original. I don't want to copy off of anything that anybody else is doing. But um, 
when it comes to like what the uh this uh right this um reading was explaining you know it could just be uh that you're turning it around or you're making it new to your own liking so um an example that i can think of is when mm. social media started you know it was maybe just like uh facebook right or myspace but now look at everything else that's emerged from there even like um uh, what we were talking about uh, tiktok right TikTok is kind of like a copy of Instagram, like where we could just see pictures and you keep scrolling and more come. And now, you know, you have videos of people dancing or doing different things or even teaching. You know, you can learn how to solve an equation in, th you know, 30 seconds by watching one of these videos. So, uh, you know, it's talking about how originality is, um, doesn't have to be like brand new. It could just um, be like, uh, you know, your own remake of something that already exists. So I appreciate that because um, if we, I'm going to implement this when I'm teaching, you know, you can have like a network of teachers, you can help each other out, you can say, okay, if you're doing this this way, maybe I can implement this also in my lesson or I can implement some of your, um, uh, your subject into what I'm doing and like that, the students get like a, a more uh, diverse experience, I'm going to say. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. I actually was rereading that part with you. So I was um, thinking about that as well. And I put in a couple com comments myself. And it just made me think too about um, the importance of understanding and respecting um, intellectual property and how that um, that um, ethical piece um, falls into this type of work as well if you're remixing and stuff like that as well. Hi. Want to Hi. Welcome, welcome Jane. Hello, Jane. Hi, everyone. I'm sorry to be late. I was in another session and, and came directly here. It's good to be with you. So our experience of this article um, is that like every time we dip back into it, there's something else there we didn't see before. So, you you know, we'll keep doing that. But it's also been really interesting to go from the theoretical to the real and look at actual multimodal work um, with this framework in mind. Um, so um, two of you, I don't know, Yudelka, if you brought anything, um, but I know Lexis and Crystal, so we'll start there did bring something that um, to share with us. And what we'd like to do, and I don't know how this is going to work out, but, but we'd like to go to each of the each of the areas, go to audience and think about your work in terms of audience, in terms of mode and meaning, and in terms of originality. Maybe we don't have to move around. We'll see um, how that works out. Because it, it, um, what, what's going to happen now is you're going to share something. Um, let me just remind you also if you use the minus key you can like see all three of the the areas sitting there oh i i meant to mention that just so you know theoretically um they have questions for each of these three areas and then you already started doing this but um they also have questions for the overlaps within each so there are actually six <laughs> right domains because the overlaps are there too so we can find different questions but i think we need to hear see the work have you lead us through it a little bit and then we can think about oh that's about audience or oh look at your mode here or oh you know that was really i like the way you remixed this here okay does that make sense hmm? <laughs> okay uh, i think i hope it does um i'm just gonna say um, Crystal, why don't you start us off? And, and so what Crystal's going to do is she's going to share her screen. Um, if up in the top bar, once she does that, is a, um, is a little thing that allows you to, to see it bigger. Um, you control that yourself. We don't do that for you. So Crystal, why don't you try to share that website that you created? Okay. 
and thank you for at the last okay. moment. Okay, so you should it should have popped up on your screen and then on the black bar at the top there are four arrows that say enter full screen if you do that you'll be able to see it bigger okay okay all right why don't you just show us what's here and then we'll think about okay so for uh one of my classes last semester we had a tech project um at, we had a lot of options there were things uh websites listed and applications listed I had never heard of before. So it was very exciting. Um, but I was assigned a uh, Google site. <laughs> so I um, created this website and it was very user friendly and creating. And I figured I imagined that I had um, an algebra one class and they needed somewhere to kind of keep track of what was going on that week or in that unit. So I'll just go ahead and click start so here. Just to say already, you've mentioned audience, right? You had an audience in mind you were designing for. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, I imagine this was for m me and my students. Um, and here, you know, they would kind of just know, have my contact information and kind of let them know what, what to expect from this website. Um, so then here, you know, they have the essentials, which is their syllabus, a copy of their textbook. Um, if you go to math practice, they're able to access regents practice for the particular unit. Um, and these will just open up separate documents. And, you know, each um, kind of link has instructions so they know what everything is actually for. Um, and then this is weekly math practice, so they can review watching a YouTube video, or they can click here and access the, you know, I guess the extra, the, the, the week's extra credit problem. So this is all just going to load very slowly. I don't know what happened to this stuff, but um, so yeah, this will have like audio for them to click on in case they're not comfortable kind of reading this, or if they read it and they just want to hear it. Um, and then, yeah, it's just examples and problems and there's an audio feature for everything here. They can just click the little symbol. Cool. Um, how do I get out of here? Is it, is it, I, do you, did you guys even see that screen? No, mm -hmm. um, oh. no, it's, it stayed on. So when it went to, when it's okay, it's okay. Oh, it probably opened to a new tab. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it did. So do you see how to, do you see how to, it, it says show this tab now. You could, you could do that. Oh, yes. Okay. okay. You got it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So you guys see this one loading? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So then this one has kind of like practice problems and review. And then for each problem, whenever they decide to load, there's a little audio like icon. So it kind of reads the problem to them um, and allows them to, you know, access this stuff lesson at home or even in the classroom if they're kind of like, not the type of kid that can handle or that doesn't like lecture um, or likes to do things on their own. So I'm going to close this cool. one. No. Oh, oh you were going to show it. Did it stop one? sharing completely? I don't, so, I don't know. <laughs> say it again. What? Did it stop sharing my screen? No, no you're still sharing. Keep, keep sharing. What, what I'd like, what um, you were the audience expert, but let's, Lexus. Okay. From, from a, I don't, yeah, because I don't know what you want me to tell you about all this so yeah I, I was going to ask Lexus to talk to ask us questions ask you questions about mode and and meaning oh yeah well um want me to ask one of the questions you had or just like my own question yeah well, having read it your own question yeah. mm -hmm. so how do you think this mode or what aspects of this mode do you think would be difficult? Where would you lose students? And which aspects of this mode do you think would be beneficial for your students? Where they'll be like easy to navigate, you think that they'll be able to handle? Um, I imagine that they would be able to navigate um, things properly. So if they don't know where, you know, if they've missed a few days of classes and they're looking for the syllabus or if they're looking for text or if they're, 
you know, nervous about the regions. I feel like they know they would be able to find everything. Um, and then when they click into things, it kind of just has like a little instructions of like, this is what this is. Um, I think it might not be as accessible to students who aren't comfortable with the language. Um, so it's something I didn't think about when I was creating this. Um, and I don't, I feel like I'm not answering your question, but you that's are. all I know. No, I feel like you did. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then how do I go back? Okay, here we go. And it's loading. Um, but yeah, so I imagine that I would link games, resources, which is, these are all like video, there are links to websites that have a lot of video um, for review problems and um, certain units and things like that, so. Yudelka, could you pose some questions about originality? Or, yeah, there you go. Or Marina, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, she's coming. She's so um, one of the issues that were brought up in my reading was um, the copyright. So in your resources, um, I saw that you, um, well, I'm, I'm going to ask it as a question. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, how do you make sure that everyone uh, who's created these things, right? So these resources or these games, how do you make sure that they're, um, that you are keeping like, ethical um, by using their work as well? You know, that's something, again, I didn't think about once I created this. I feel like everything that, not everything, most of the things on here are links to the creator's um, direct content, like their website. Um, but there are two things that I um, didn't think about, which is something, the things I created, which I, you know, want people to know that, you know, you can contact me if you want more of this. Um, and then also like there were two things that I downloaded that um, I didn't link where I got it from. So like- um, So what are the things you created? Oh, the uh, book list. Um, mm -hmm. That's about it. <laughs> but yeah, the book list, this is something I've actually been keeping like my entire life and it's just a book um, list. If you showed it, you, we, you need to show us that oh. tab again. All right, here you go. It's a bit of a loading. Picture. So Good. this is Thank an you. endless list I've been keeping of, of math books, math reading, math fiction, nonfiction, things um, helping with proof, um, things helping with, you know, college math. And then, but my favorite is obviously the math fiction down here because um, it kind of get, allows you to enjoy math in a different way. And I always imagine that like, I could share that with students at some point somehow. Um, and then I was gonna add like research articles about um, like inter interdisciplinary ways that um, you could enjoy math through music or poetry, or art, things like that. Um, but yeah, this is just like, this is something I I created and I didn't even put my information on it, so. That's cool. That's something that I need to do. So I just, yeah. I mean, I, there is a lot of worry about um, copyright stuff. My reading of the article, I got to say, is that I think they're asking us to not, that maybe we don't have to be so worried about all that, okay? Because we're always remixing stuff um, and, and there's fair use and so forth. And so maybe instead... We should just be aware of what when we're using other sources. Be able to say, "I use this source from here," and, and and also be aware of you know what is coming from what's original. What's you know I'm really passionate about the way you just did that, Crystal. So I think it's about awareness, and not about and not about worry about you know what reusing other people's stuff. Yeah, I understand that because like. With me, I feel like when you're a creator or like, I don't know, it's just like everything is meant to be shared. That is like knowledge and things you create. You don't create them for yourself, just, you know, for you to enjoy them privately with no one else involved. So it's like, I feel like as soon as you give, put something out there, it, 
you're allowing it to to go into other people's hands and for other people to take it and run and you know um if they get ideas or if they get inspired um it shouldn't have to be all these like little checks and balances for them to be able to to create with it themselves so i like um i kind of was skimming through the originality stuff um when Udelka was talking about it and I saw that there were comments talking about how it, things are really like they transform and you know, they, they just, they change and you build on stuff. And I, I really like that because it's like, you're not kind of copying and you're not borrowing and you're not recreating. It's just, it's, it's transforming. And it, you know, I really like that. Right. And, and for students, it's about the awareness of how much you're transforming. Like, if you just take something and put it there, maybe that's not transforming. But if you adjust it and change it, and, you know, right. The, um, just back on audience for a second, you created this for what grade? Uh, I imagined it was like ninth grade, ninth right. grade. But yeah. you also created it in a class. So there was yeah, audience. so I actually created it for my peers and um, my professor uh -huh. right. <laughs> to review. And you put it up, and it's out there in the world, so yeah. anybody can come to it. So yeah, it's, it's public. I couldn't find it for like half the day either. <laughs> so I was like, well, "Where am sort I? Of public. Where do you track of your website?" Um, Crystal, I, yeah, I really, really liked your presentation. Like, I want to steal it. <laughs> Thank you. No, <laughs> you, I'll send. I'll share a link in the chat. Yeah, I wanna. I wanna see that website to see if I can. Uh, we invented it. it also for <laughs> science. <laughs> Definitely. So what I did, you know, it was really fun creating it because all those icons are pictures that I like, I, I kind of found all these pictures of things, um, these little icons. And then I picked and chose the ones that I wanted and I picked the font and the colors and the background. Like, it's like you set up like the, this beautiful PowerPoint slide and it turns into a website and then you can connect it to, you know, your Google classroom or to anything else. And it's, it's just so much fun. It was so much fun. Cool. Let's leave some time to go to um, Lex's work as well. Um, I do want I do want to ask a question at the end. It's kind of a setup question, but I'll say, I, but I I want to leave enough time for Lexus. The question is like we just did an assessment of of Crystal of Crystal's work, right? Um, so how is that kind of assessment kind of different than other kinds of assessments that happen? So just hold that question for a minute here, Lexus. Do you want to try to share your screen and we'll pop into there again yeah cool um, and again thank you for bringing something at the last minute both of you. that's great again again at the top of the pop-up screen that came up you can click on the enter full screen and the, it'll get bigger for you okay. sorry i'm just okay um so this is we had an assignment where we had to create using like different versions of te um, technology to kind of create to put a lesson um, on there. So I picked um, the model of the cell. Um, I think I can put it like, yeah. Yep. Is that better? That's okay. better. Yep. Okay. So um, mine says model of the cell. Um, and mostly talking about the organelles that. Are involved their function and when i made this i had this in mind for a ninth my ninth grade class and they are level 13 so mean they have the highest english proficiency as well as academic academically they are um at high standpoints that's a very um, specific audience i gotta say <laughs> yeah because so, our school <laughs> is cool. broken down it's broken yes. down from yes. so in ninth grade there's 11 12 and 13 um 11 is entering 13 i mean 12 is 11 is entering for, like on the, the lsats um 12 is emerging and 13s are usually they were born in the country they're very proficient in english um there might be a few transitioning students in there as well okay um yeah so i picked nearpod because I felt it was very, it's very interactive. You can also monitor the students while they're doing work. Um, I can show that 
in how that's done. But By the also, way, you're answering the question about media right now, right? And mode, mode and meaning. But go yeah. ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, um, it's very interactive, which is what I wanted to kind of like grasp. I wanted the students to be like, wow, this is interesting. This is fun. At the same time, while they are learning content. So not only the activity is fun, but the content within itself is memorable. Um, so the first task um, is kind of recalling on the lesson before, which was life processes. And what they had to do is it's a game called Time to Climb. Mm. And what it does is that each student, you can't see it through this mode, but each student is kind of like on a mountain and they're answering these different questions. And whoever gets to the mountain first is the winner. Um, but it's just different questions within this was the do now. Like five simple questions about which um, life process they had learned about. What Which process does the image match to? Um, then afterwards, <clears throat> sorry, um, we had the objective where students were to read it out loud. Um, so Nearpod is also kind of like, it was meant to be like Nearpod and Zoom together. Um, so the students would read the objective well, one student would read the objective to the class, and then we'll get into like the lesson and what we're doing. But that's can I just I just want to clarify when you say it's Nearpod and Zoom together, you're imagining that this is a remote classroom? Yes. Okay. It could also be done in person. The student would just have to read out loud for us the objective. Got it. We okay. did do it over Zoom, like I presented it to like the student teaching class. Um, my peers in a Zoom meeting, so it could be done both ways. Okay, got it. Um, then once other student reads the instructions, and for this, this was like the main activity, um, where they're like taking down notes and learning about the different type of organelles. Um, they had to click on this interactive work um website, which is on the next one. Let me see if I can open it. Can you see my screen? Uh, if you went, if you went to a different tab, you're going to have to go up and hit the show this tab now. Do you see that? Um, I do not, because it came up as a pop up. Oh yeah. Um, I can copy the link. It's fine. Okay. Can you... If you can get it into a tab, then you can see. Mm hmm. Sorry, it completely. Okay. <laughs> um, so sh share that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. good. So basically, then students would have to click this link, and it is an interactive cell. And they have when they click the different type of cell organelles, it tells them a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. um, you can learn more information if um, if wanted, but we have. The goal was for them to investigate the animal and the plant cell. So they had this worksheet where it says, what's the organelle for the plant cell and what's the function and what's the organelles for the animal cell and what's the function. And they, they had to talk about the differences amongst each other um, that they had found. Um, they do have fungus and bacterium if we wanted to go into it, but we're really focused on just animal and plant. And they can visit, they can visual, like it was for visual learners, um, also for readers. Um, I would think you can also hear it. Mm -hmm. Oh no, no, this is not hearing it. Sorry. Um, it's not audio. It's only visual and um, like pictures as well as reading. Then afterwards, students, sorry, I have to switch back. If I'm, I I'm impressed with your ability to go back and forth. So go for it. <laughs> I, if I close You're it. You're going back it's... to the Nearpod now, right? Yeah. yeah, I'm going back to the Nearpod. So I'm yeah. just not sure you can see the Nearpod right now. Not yet. Okay. Um, there you go.
Perfect. But I am so, I, I am also looking at time here though too. So yeah. Okay, so I'll just like quickly run through it. So afterwards, mm -hmm. students will just like answer a few like comprehension questions of what they saw in the differences in the two lab. Um, those are the three questions pretty quick. Um, and they're kind of like homework assignment would have been to create an emoji cell where it was typically supposed to be done in class, but I felt like this was a lot to do in 45 minutes. <laughs> um, or even the next day, they can do what is called like the emoji cell. And what I liked about this is when they do this project, they, everybody can, I can see everyone's work. Like, so while they're working on it, I can see, okay, I can understand their thinking. They're like, okay, this emoji I would use. Be, and um, I would say, okay, for me, I can understand why they would use that. But if I, I don't understand, the whole point was them also to label what that organelle was. And then we were going to all discuss after. So this is where I can see everyone's mm -hmm. um, animal cell or plant cell. I told them to um, make an animal cell. Um, and then afterwards, they're supposed to share out loud about, you know, why they chose the certain, um, certain emojis, what is that supposed to represent, and how does it connect to the job of the organelles. And lastly, it was just supposed to be a poll of, um, how did they feel about the content itself and the activity. Um, cool. So I ended it. So thank you for sharing. Let's let's go around and ask some questions now. I mean, you were, um, Crystal. Do you want to take on the audience questions, <laughs> or anything sure. else too? I remember. Sorry, you mentioned it was um, for a specific uh, like group within a class or a specific class in a grade. Can you remind me? I'm sorry. Right. So this is for class 13, which is typically the most um, proficient students. The students have the highest proficiency in English, as well as their academics are usually the highest in this group level. Okay. And then, um, I mean, I guess, yeah, like the audience was the students, but also, um, I'm not sure. It's like, I'm, I'm, I lost my train of thought. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so my audience was definitely the students, and I was supposed to try to make it as interactive, but also as informative, where my peers could also um, understand like how to follow along with it. Um, I would say I the. I, sorry. No, one of the questions I was thinking um, is that you're designing for inner. One of the things they point out in the article is that what's different now is you don't just have an audience who's going to read something. You at, it's an audience who you want them to do something. Mm -hmm. And your your example really does that, right? Yeah. You're, you're asking for activity on the other end. Yeah. Right. I, it's kind of obvious. I'm just <laughs> pointing it out. But Yeah, it definitely had two different type of activities for them to do. One was more, um, I would say, academically centered where they had to learn about the different animal cells and the other version was them like catering to the creativity side and they really had to think out the box to connect mm -hmm. organelles and emojis yeah cool you yeah, I feel like, um, oh sorry the experience like her, she, what she wanted her audience to be engaged with and with the experience she wanted them to have was just like perfect it was just was perfect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Yudelka, do you have any ori originality oh. questions that you could pose? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess I could pose one. Um, Lexus, it was beautiful. I really loved your slides too. Thank um, you. I want to be a student in your class. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but, um, um, from uh, one of the questions in my in my little boxes, from what uh, what inspired your creativity in this in this one, or like where did you get your idea to come up with this for your class um so i definitely got this like like an idea from a teacher inspired me so in her project she had also where they were working on cell organelles however they were to make like an instagram post for the cell organelle they had to put comments however um 
they had to do it for one organelle that they were focused on. So I was like, you know what? I want them to hmm. focus on the whole cell as um, like in all the different type of functions that play into it. So that is also, that's one inspiration. So I kind of like took the idea of, you know, giving the cell kind of an animate um, or lifelike feature, I would say. Took that idea. Um, Nearpod is just something that I know that it was, we were had like a technology workshop and they're just like giving us a bunch of different resources. And that one seemed like the most interactive also while it's able to, it's easier to assess and monitor your students, especially like during like we're pandemic um, time when it was <laughs> um, introduced to me. So that's also like what inspired me picking this type of mode. Yeah, so you're answering some mode questions there too. That's cool. Again, I, you had different things going on too. You had like little pictures where students had to create their own. So you had different things going on too. Okay, you did great. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she had to go. So, um, so, um, let's uh let's pull this together a little bit uh, so thank you thank you thank you for presenting the, the, those are wonderful presentations and um you did it you pulled together last minute for us um the uh what i'd love to hear is how, how you're thinking about the theory and the practice now that we've kind of put the two together um do you find these useful categories these audience mode and meaning and originality or what are you thinking about them now? Um, absolutely. I I liked um, how in audience they mentioned like power dynamics and like you know looking for potential uh, conflict with you know what the audience might um, encounter with you know uh, whatever they're interacting with. But I also um, kind of like that really open communication that the creator will have um, and that immediate feedback and um, the data that they immediately have access to from creating something and kind of like publishing it and putting it online. I feel like that's something I didn't think about at all. Um, and then having that kind of be a reality of creating things in like virtual spaces, it, it, it sounds a little overwhelming, but it, it's actually great because you get to kind of, um, close off those loose ends and plan for that. So that's something I put in my in the chat because I apparently couldn't think about it a few minutes ago. But like, <laughs> with Alexis's presentation, I just I loved how she had that feedback, even though it's just a, like a poll, it was that feedback section, because she's controlling that, um, you know, the that communication from the audience. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of like, you know, here, put in your two cents but that there's like a space for that. So creating like a space for that um, is pretty cool. Great. Alexis, what are your thoughts here at the end? Um, for me, it's definitely seeing how the three type of um, aspects of a multi, sorry, a multi, is it a multi-model? Model, so yeah. Um kind of all play a role into what we should definitely choose for our students and for me is especially important because there are their differences in you know English language development um as well as how familiar they are with interacting with these type of modes so like I said for 11s they're probably just coming into the country they're not they haven't been introduced for these type of modes so you have to kind of introduce them like together we all have to learn about it together rather like let's say nearpod i when i work with it with my 13s they're maybe a f more familiar easier to like pick up the pace when um introducing this but while i do have this great mode it may not be entirely useful for a group such as like 11 um entering else just because of like the cultural aspect that they bring to the classroom their linguistic aspects um it's definitely very like useful to see those type of things going into play when we pick how to um how to uh, it's direct like instruction and things like that 
Oh, great. Yudelka, are you still there? Okay. I'm here. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so I like, um, I really like this workshop because um, it made me think of um, not only just presenting information, but just uh, like in the audience section, like thinking of who you're teaching it to and what you want them to get out of. Right. That's kind of like what I got from audience. Like, what do you want them to get out of this? What do you want them to do with this information? Um, and the mode is how are you going to present it? Um, in the examples that you guys mentioned, there was um, or what I could read from it. Um, like there was a teacher saying how instead of um, giving the students a long essay to read, she gave them like short um, Instagram posts. So they're still reading the same material but it's um, presented differently and it's also giving them, uh, it's making it more meaningful to them because they're using something that they know or that they like. So, um, you know, thinking of your audience, you know, young students that like technology and in implementing that into your, um, your lessons. And when it comes to originality, you know, you can, you can uh, have an idea from somebody else's idea and things just continue to improve. That's how we've gotten so far in technology and society. So I, I that's kind of like what I got from the workshop. I love your summaries. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and we want to respect your time. Uh, if, but if anybody else has anything else to say, uh, jump in. Or... <laughs> Great. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it, uh, as you know, these rooms all stay here. So if you ever want to come back, it's kumospace.com slash noise dash them. Um, you can find the article here again if you want to check it out and see what other people are doing. Um, I, 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 I can't, I can't not invite you, so I will do um, on Wednesday coming up, some of the authors from the article are going to be with us and we're going to be looking at um, another teacher's work. You are welcome to join us. We're going to do basically the same thing we did here today. So thank you. Marina, you have anything else to add here at the end or Jane? I really, again, like it, I, I really appreciated hearing um, all of the takeaways that the three of you had from the three different aspects. And um, I just read your comment in the chat, Crystal, that um, it, it's it's very true that um, we have so much multimodal work that's going on in um, our learning spaces right now from um, high school, college, even third graders in my, you know, in my space too and, and younger. Um, so it's pretty exciting um, to kind of think now um, about this work and um, and how we can assess it um, and how we can support students as they um, are creating. I, I just wanted to add quickly at the end, um, as someone who's been more of an observer, um, you know, it brings me back to the first workshop when we were thinking about descriptive practice and review and looking at children and just the ways in which all of those kind of foundational experiences for a teacher inform how you think about, you know, multimodal composition, because it kind of feels like it gets to the underneath of it all of, of why it can really direct you and, you know, into what you actually end up providing, you know, to students. Thank you all. Um, I, you're going to see us again. So sorry to say that. No, I'm not sorry. <laughs> We're looking forward to seeing you in the summertime. You'll, you'll learn more about that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking forward. Okay. I remember when we first got into Kumo space, I was like, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but then I was like, oh, this is like a Sims Zoom. I like it. There you go. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. That's true. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank all right. you all. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good night.